transactional, mm-hmm. you know, discussing about if you should increase the price with 2% or 3% next year. Mm-hmm. That's not the big thing to discuss. Yeah. The big thing to discuss is how do we make sure that we that we have the same targets and that we both feel that this is a profitable setup. Mm-hmm. Setup. Mm-hmm. So now if, um, going back to this um, sort of like availability and performance contracts, um, do you think that, so, because the contracts will have to change and like the way that the procurement team now works, it would not fit um, an agreement such as like an availability and performance contract. So what do you think should be included in that contract? I don't know if this is like your area of still of expertise, but how would that contract change? Could you take that question once more? Yeah, so it's because like in my brain it sounds good and then I say it, it's like, no, I'm making a mess. <laughs> So, yeah, when you, when you do this, like, um, let's say, transactional provider, you have, like, a specific legal agreements and a specific, like, the procurement uh, contracts. But when it comes to this availability um, and performance contracts, which is long-term relationship, and it completely changes the way you are, the relationship with the customer, and also, you know, the responsibilities. So what should be in the service contract to make it, um, let's say, to ensure that both, are, you know, complying with what they promised to, like what needs to be in that contract to, let's say, lower the risks? Yeah, lowering the risk uh, is one thing, but I think you, 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 I think again we should turn it around, we shouldn't lower the risk, we need to uh, to increase the possibility of success. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to have the focus on what we are going to achieve. Uh, not what we are afraid of, yeah. because that's, that's kind of the opposite way. So, and that's what I mean, it's, it's a bit of a, a game of trust, but then you have to get it down to a contract where you really you know, have the boundaries. And mm-hmm. so it has to be extremely concrete KPIs, and we have to be agreed on how we measure. So it's no discussion, I mean, this is the way we measure, and this is the KPI we are following, and this is the way we, yeah decide the price or bonus or whatever the setup is. Uh, I'm, I'm also uh, personally not very fond of uh, malus in the, in the contracts, the bonus I mm-hmm. like, malus I don't like. I, I rather make sure that we agree on a pretty low ground level so that we know that we, we have to work a bit to to reach the bonus, because otherwise we are more or less no, no winners. Mm-hmm. Uh, but more or less, that's more, you know, that's again a punishment, and uh, you're focusing on the wrong thing, you're focusing on avoiding the malus. We should focus on getting the bonus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Starting it more into the positive, like the opportunities, right, and keeping and, it, and, yeah. And set the contract up so you have maximized the possibilities to succeed not minimizing the risk of failing. <laughs> yeah. So do you see, do you foresee like in the future uh, that product as a service uh, would offset the costs involved or the risk associated with it? So that the value will be higher? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, and I mean, yeah, I mean the trend goes more and more to that. And I mean we we also have to, to understand that services in general is a, is a you know, shrinking, decreasing market because we are better and better in producing things that should last mm-hmm. as long as we want. So, I mean, again, bearings, for example, uh, if, you, if you have the uh, um, bearing from SKF in the right environment, with the right uh, power and everything, it should last for like 70 years. Mm-hmm. So you won't need to have a service technician there. So I think you also push you know, the suppliers a bit to, mm-hmm. to be able to do business. They have to find these kind of solutions. Product as a service, I don't know, Scania sell, not selling trucks anymore, they are mm-hmm. selling transport uh, tons, mm-hmm. mines, Whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
And, and we can find a way, but it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge right now to get the, also the legal part correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we see a lot. It's like that there is, I mean, they recognize, the companies recognize the opportunities, but at the same time, um, there are like these slow steps towards it. And it just feels like the journey doesn't move forward because there is like the internal problems within the customer organization and then that's the internal problems within the provider as to how to change it, you know, into both coming into this product as a service, how to take the following step, let's say. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's a, of course a, a tough question, but you have to... But I think it's, again, the key is to find out what you want to achieve. What is it that will bring, bring value to, to, if I'm the customer, what will bring value to, to me as a customer? And, and how can, can we decide that the value you create as a supplier is, or a partner with us is, uh, is aligned with that and it's really pushing my value up so that I'm prepared to also give you a share of it. Mm -hmm. Whether you have it as a profit sharing, but or a, or a price tag or whatever, but you know, it's it's when when I I as a customer or a partner realize that this is really increasing the value for me, then I will also be prepared to to make sure that my partner is a profitable uh, also. Mm -hmm. So, in the case of um, your organization. What would it be like, for instance, like the first area that you would look into transforming towards more advanced products as a service? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, uh, well, transport is one thing where we where we probably will do that. Uh, also, because it's in one way simple <laughs> that you you understand that people, what, what I really need is I need that this uh, paper roll or whatever it is moved from there to the port or wherever it is mm -hmm. so that's probably one thing that we, we should go for them and it's a little hard to say where in the, in the production process it is going to be process optimization or where it's going to be but in one way we as said we already more or less have that set up with our big technology supplier when it comes to paper production and they will have a they will have a bonus if, if we produce more paper uh, and we will not pay you know an exact price tag for what they're going to do they they can a little bit adjust that as long as we produce more and more paper and they will get paid mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the areas that we're looking at uh, has been like engines or motors as a, let's say, low-hanging fruit in the sense of ensuring the performance and availability of a motor because then that is what, you know, just like everything will be interconnected with it. So is that something that... Of course, but I mean we have so many motors here in the, in the mill, so uh, it's still, you know... To make sure that we really can, you know, see the value, we still go for the end product. If we produce more paper, we will earn more money. It's not 100% sure that we will earn more money because one motor is running. Yeah. It could be something. So, so that's why we still are on, you know, really the, the end product there. If we can get more product out, then we, we prepare to, to pay bonuses. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I, I, I can absolutely see that uh, mode. But the problem in the middle is that there's so many motors and so many things that can be connected to each other. So that's why I say it's, it's easier in one way to say transportation mm -hmm. because that's isolated so that we understand what's, yeah. what's happening and so on. But I'm pretty sure that it's not far away when A, B, B, and C, and some of these people can offer. Yeah, product as a service with their motors, for example. So. Mm -hmm. And maybe also like one of the challenges with the motors is like the different um, life cycles of the motors. So when it comes to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's still, I mean, we're, we're running 24-7 all year long, so it's just 
just typical humming. I mean, of course, we need to change some where, here and there, but.